Hey you guys it's Holland. What's good and welcome back to my channel. As you can see by the title, today I will be doing a video displaying some more of my K-pop unpopular opinions since my last unpopular opinions video was about 5 months ago. But first, a disclaimer. I just decided to just sit here and talk my shit per usual like I always do. If you guys know me, if you don't know me, if this is your first time seeing me, hey, hello, how are you? This is for you. Um, I am a very opinionated person, meaning I like to state my opinions, bitch. They're not facts, but they're my opinions. You don't have to like them, however, but you will respect them. Don't come for me. You come for me, come correct. Or don't come at all. And you come for me when I send for you. If I didn't send for you, don't come for me, know your place. So now let's get into the video. My first opinion is that just because a member of a group has a lead or main rapper or singer position, does not mean that they are the best or second best rapper or singer in that group. This is because, when it comes to the K-pop industry, the company's job is to market the group to the public to gain as much attention and recognition as possible, to therefore gain as much revenue as possible. So, by this logic, when it comes to giving certain members positions, they are obviously going to give the main and lead positions to singers and vocalists who have a more universally likable vocal color, instead of giving it to the person who is objectively a better singer or rapper. For example, in BTS, Jimin is listed as the lead vocalist because he has a more universally likable vocal color in the group, even though, from an objective standpoint, V and Jin are better vocalists than him. My next opinion is that I believe that Dahun and Momo should switch their roles in the group. When I say this, I am obviously not talking about Momo's dancing position as she is one of the best dancers in the group. More so, I am mainly focusing on their vocals and rapping. Look, I am not trying to be rude or disrespectful when I say this, and I want to preface this by saying that Momo is one of my biases in twice along with Jihyo, but it's very obvious that Momo was not prepared or trained enough to be a proper vocalist in the group which I don't have a problem with because we as K-pop stands can't expect our faves to be good at everything, and I personally think that JYP he should showcase Momo's strengths, which are dancing and rapping. Granted I know that Momo is not on the same level as Chai Young when it comes to rapping, but I feel like it would take less effort for JYP to coach her on her vocals than her rapping. As for Dehun, the reason why I'd want to her assume a more vocal heavy role is because, as most onces can attest from listening to their b-sides, Dehun is a very decent vocalist when she is singing, and I feel like JYP is sort of wasting her talents as a vocalist by hardly ever giving her vocal lines and title tracks. My next opinion is that I don't like big hit strategy of buying companies, like Pledis Entertainment and Source Music, to expand their portfolio as a company, in fact, I find it quite lazy. This is because, as I've said in the past, the reason why Big Hit is not considered a part of the Big Three along with JYP, YG, and SM Entertainment is that those companies have an extensive portfolio of multiple successful groups that have dominated the K-pop industry, and they have established a long legacy for themselves that has lasted for several decades. Meanwhile, when it comes to Big Hit, I feel like, instead of being patient and waiting for their own groups besides BTS to reach a similar level, they are trying to take the easy way out by buying other companies of successful groups like G Friend and Seventeen and Newest, as well as debuting groups at abnormally quick rates with Big Hit debuting and Hippin with TXT only being a two year old group, and apparently Big Hit is supposed to debut a girl group next year in 2022. My next opinion is that I like EDM music lol. I mainly put this opinion in here because a lot of people I've seen have been complaining over the past couple of years about groups like Stray Kids having quote unquote noise music, when, in reality, what you are trying to say is that you simply just don't like the EDM genre, and that is perfectly okay. However, I can simply not relate. Especially because even before I got into K-pop, this is the kind of music I used to listen to. My next opinion is that I feel like NCT would do better as a vocal based group. This is because I personally am mainly attracted to them as a group for their vocals, which I was really surprised about because, before I started to get to know NCT and eventually stand them, I thought that their vocals were average at best, 
But then I started listening to their full discography and realized the exact opposite and that SM just doesn't tend to showcase them very often compared to their rappers and dancers. In addition, with the exception of Mark and maybe Taeyong and Yang Yang, I feel like the majority of NCT's rappers are average to below average. So, at least in my personal opinion, since NCT has more above average vocalists than they do above average rappers, it would make more sense for them to be a vocal based group. Next is that I think twice as I can't stop me was good. A lot of people called this song underwhelming which I can understand when you compare it to their other title tracks like Feel Special and Fancy. However, I personally still like it and have been streaming it and dancing along to the choreography for the past several months to this day since its release. My only problem with this comeback is the excessive aid-libs in the background, and the fact that the song is not exactly in their vocal range, but besides that I really love it. Next is that NCT's unlimited member concept is not hard to understand. I don't know about y'all, but I personally did not find it difficult to learn all of the members, mainly because I am naturally a quick learner and adapt to information fairly easily. However, even for people who aren't like me, I still think that if you break NCT down subunit by subunit, it is not very difficult to memorize their names and get to know their personalities. My only gripe with SM is, like with EXO's concept, they have a hard time committing to NCT's concept. Take NCT Dream for example. NCT Dream was meant to be a fixed unit with a more bubbly cute concept and graduating system, in which a member would move on to another subunit once they reached a certain age. Now, SM is turning them into a fixed unit and is pretty much promoting Dream with the same boy crush concept that 127 has. Next is that EXO does not have a weak rap line. I do not know what kind of logic that people have used to say otherwise, but EXO's rap line is far from being considered weak by any means. I think it is because EXO is mainly promoted as a vocal based group with D.O., Chen, and Baekhyun being some of the best male vocalists in the K-pop industry, however, just because a group is more vocal based, does not mean that their rap line is automatically bad. If you need some convincing, I suggest you check out some of Soon and Chan Yul's subunit work with XOSC. Last is that I really do not care too much about learning about K-pop idols' personal lives. This is because I've never really been interested in that kind of stuff and tend to have a hyperfixation on an artist's music and that's about it, which is interesting because the K-pop industry is structured differently than the Western music industry in which K-pop companies put an emphasis on getting to know an idol besides their music through things like variety shows. However, I simply don't have too much of an interest to delve deeper and try to learn about their hobbies, their favorite color, and stuff like that, and I'm simply content with just consuming their musical content as well as gaining a general understanding of their personality. Ok you guys, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you wish to purchase an astrology or tarot card reading from me, click the link in the description below. If you wish to DM me a private question that you have about one of my videos, here is my Instagram and Twitter. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And remember to stay snatched.